So the UFC finally seems to have come full circle and returned to normality. Crowds are roaring, Nick Diaz is back, Dana White still hates Oscar De La Hoya, and John Jones has been arrested. Before we jump into the video today, I do want to say only 5.3% of you are subscribed. So if you enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe down below. Cheers. Following the UFC Hall of Fame ceremony in Vegas, Jones had been staying at Caesars Palace. Early in the morning, the police were called by hotel staff at the request of John Jones' daughter, who had witnessed Jones being domestically violent towards his fiancée, Jesse Moses. Jones tried to flee on foot before being stopped and arrested by police, headbutting and damaging a police car in frustration. Jones had come back to the hotel after partying with friends, before Moses fled to the lobby with blood on her face and clothes, and a bruised lip. And as you know, this isn't the first time John Jones has had legal troubles. But with a pattern of behaviour, I find myself wondering if this could lead to Jones getting cut by the promotion. Jones went from a broke college dropout to a UFC champion with a Nike deal in three years. And similar to many men before him, he got swept up by the fame. These invincibility complexes have been seen time and time again in these top performing athletes. The likes of Tyson, Fury and McGregor all spring to mind. The first time we saw Bones Jones' reckless side was in 2012, when a drunk John crashed his Bentley into a telephone pole, totaling the car. He would then test positive for cocaine metabolites ahead of his first match with Daniel Cormier, only to be stripped and suspended by the UFC indefinitely after a hit and run incident in Albuquerque. Jones was drunk, fleeing the scene, leaving a pregnant woman injured in her car. Jones was sentenced to 18 months of supervised probation and following avoiding felony charges, six months later, Jones was reinstated into the UFC roster. After coming back from suspension, Jones consumed tainted dick pills while partying, leaving traces of estrogen blockers in his system. People's suspicions were fueled even further after John Jones' pre-fight drug tests in his rematch against Cormier came back positive for the steroid Tyranobol, with his team again accusing tainted supplements. After another year away suspended, Jones returned, defeating Gustafsson before taking on Anthony Smith. Since the fight, Smith has claimed that Jones failed every drug test the entire week leading up to our fight. Every single drug test. I never brought it up one time in any interview, in any media thing, nothing. The commission called me every day to let me know that he was still failing his drug test. In early 2020, police were patrolling after hearing a firearm discharge in Jones' hometown, New Mexico. Jones was discovered driving around and under the influence, blowing twice the legal limit with a firearm under his seat. He was sentenced to four days house arrest and a year on probation. Jones is currently ranked as the pound for pound king of MMA, and he's beaten an extensive list of greats. But his attitude problems and failed drug tests have seen many disregard him as the greatest MMA fighter of all time. His return to face heavyweight king, Francis Ngannou, is off the cards for now, with Jones' court date set for the 23rd of October. It sounds like the UFC will take action after that, but with the likes of Greg Hardy on their roster, I don't think the UFC is likely to part way with Jones. Do you think this is the last straw for the UFC? Let me know what you think down below. Like the video if you hate domestic violence, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. So I have always just focused on winning, and uh, I think when I come back as a heavyweight, I'll try to do more legally controversial shit <laughs> uh, so, so, so that I can maybe sell a little more pay-per-view. <laughs>